Okay, welcome everyone. We're just uh, giving it another minute for others to join in. And then we'll get started. all very quiet here while we wait and see. <laughs> okay, well, we're just after one o'clock, so I guess we'll uh, get started. And um, so welcome everyone to uh, Passport for Growth. I'm Deborah Uden, the export consultant with Enlo. And we have with us today a uh, guest, uh, Paul Gerin, who's with uh, Government Procurement, with uh, Procurement and Assistance Canada. And Paul is, um, is going to cover the topic of doing business with the federal government. And there have been some changes in the last little while, so he's going to bring the latest information to us so we can uh, look at the opportunities that uh, the Government of Canada offers us as uh, business people. So, Paul, I'll turn it over to you, and thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Paul Gérin, and I'm an Outreach Officer with Procurement Assistance Canada, or our acronym PAC. Um, years ago, you may have known us as the Office of Small Medium Enterprises, so OSME. So we have gone through a rebranding, and we are with Public Services and Procurement Canada, previously known as PWGSC. So our session today will cover a, a quick overview of selling your product or service to the Government of Canada and the various resource tools that are available to you. So Procurement Assistance Canada was created as part of our larger department um, to provide support for businesses in the federal procurement process. Our role is to engage with businesses and organizations to assist them and, inf and inform them on how to sell their goods and services to the government of Canada and to hopefully reduce the barriers in an effort to ensure fairness in the process in the procurement process. We hopefully do this by listening to your concerns, answering questions and understanding and help you understand the procurement process and, uh, and help you identify various opportunities. Let's talk about opportunities. Each year, the government spends literally billions of dollars on hundreds of thousands of contracts. Um, and we also make very direct purchases by credit cards for smaller purchases. So this also represents a huge market. One of the, my role is to help engage small business communities and to hear their concerns and to identify what we sell. So over the course of uh, the last few years, the government's purchased just over $23 billion annually on goods and services on various construction requirements, as well as maintenance. Of those, a lot of those processes are done for contracts that are over 500,000, but also under uh, that amount as well. And over 2 million credit card transactions for smaller purchases are done quite often. When we think of what the government buys, it is really a list of products and services. So we buy everything from technology, military equipment, property, professional services, construction, but we also offer things like catering, snow removal and landscaping, um, one wouldn't think, but dog grooming and dogs uh, in terms of the RCMP and the needs there. Um, we purchase clothing. Um, we buy shower curtains. Um, we buy fitness equipment. So we really buy uh, a, a very large variety of product. The old adage is, is we buy anything from a paperclip to a warship.
you also have to look at the government of Canada as not one client. Um, so our department, Public Works and uh, Procurement Services, were the central body for the, the federal government in terms of purchasing. But we have over 100 departments and agencies that also purchase on their own behalf. So depending on the value of a product or service, then PSPC may be the purchaser on their behalf, um, or we may be facilitating the contract on that department behalf. And that department then themselves is actually then purchasing the equipment directly. One of the things to note as well is not all government contracts get listed on the website. So for products and services below a specific threshold, departments and agencies will use non-tender approaches. So for goods under 25,000 or for services under 40,000, departments will actually use the supplier registration database and will do not sole uh, single source sor sourcing, but will actually look for suppliers in their region and then do smaller requests versus putting it out for tender. And we'll do that through a variety of methods, but we will use both the tendering process, but we will also look for suppliers based on the supplier database. So most of our purchases are done through our regional centralized website called buyandsell.gc.ca, which I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, so that is the formal process and, and it hopefully ensures for an open and fair and transparent competition um, for government contracts. And it's not the lowest value um, that wins the contract. Um, it is sometimes very specific to the nature of the, the request in the tender that actually wins. So we're not looking um, for the lowest bid. Um, sometimes we are, but we are looking for the, the service or the product to meet the, the demand of the department. So things that you need to be aware when uh, looking at a document is, what is the requirement, who's requiring the document, where the product or service is being delivered. So you could be bidding on work that's actually not in Newfoundland, but in other regions as well, especially with today's technology of a virtual platform, if you're able to deliver your product or service to other regions, not just within uh, Newfoundland. And from there, once the, the government has received the, the information, they will then identify the, the winner or the recipient of the contract. So anyone is capable of delivering on a bid and they're able to bid on those, um, allowing for government to acquire their product or service. So with low dollar value, we do identify non-competitive um, and it is sometimes to get the best value for the document, for the product or service. So it makes sense sometimes to use centralized resources um, in Newfoundland to purchase from Newfoundland. So the, the local departments in Newfoundland would reach out through our supplier database for information. So currently the federal government is using buyandsell.gc.ca. So that is currently the only site that currently has all of our procurement processes on. Um, as we go through the presentation, you'll we'll talk about our transition and things that are uh, that that are happening. So buy and sell is used by all of our federal departments and agencies. Um, it is a free site, so do not pay to register. When in the site, it does allow you to research information using plain language, similar to what you would use in Google for identifying a product or service. So I can put in drone uh, technology, I can put in a video consultant, I can put in translation using very specific, uh, uh, those spe specific terms, or you're able to use what we call the goods and services identification number. So every product and service actually has a number that correlates to its product or service. So we use the acronym GSIN, but it does stand for goods and services identification number. 
And going into the new platform, as well as um, our current platform, we also use the United Nations Standard Products and Services Code, so the UNSPSC. So both of those codes are used to identify both a product and a service. By using both the, the product or service or those keywords, you're able to also identify previous awarded contracts. And that then gives you an idea of what the government buys. So doing that historical research does then allow you to navigate a little bit better on what the government buys. You can also subscribe to notifications when new opportunities uh, are identified both within the current system. And I'll talk a little bit about how one does that in the new system as well. So with government, and especially where we do purchase a lot of low dollar value, it is also that capacity to build your network. So through the federal government, we do have a list of procurement officers, both within our department that have contacts within various departments and agencies, but you're, uh, you as a supplier are able to navigate uh, directly through what we call our government employee directory and identify employees in your region that actually do purchasing or may be able to connect you with a, a local staff member in their office. So by doing that networking, it does allow you to build your network. And then when uh, suppliers are looking for, or when departments are looking for the suppliers, when they're looking through that supplier database, then by having that conversation with those, uh, those suppliers, as well as those departments, it then allows them to put a name to a face um, or a, a name to a business. So by using what we call GEDS, the Government Employee Directory, you're able to navigate most federal departments and agencies, with exception of the Department of National Defense, the RCMP, and the Canadian Security Intelligence Services, because of security reasons, their names uh, are not listed in the directory. But if you were looking to sell to the Department of Defense or to the RCMP, then our staff within the Public Service uh, and Procurement Canada office would then be able to provide you with a contact. If you're looking at historical documents, a lot of times that contact information hasn't changed as well. So unless the, the member has retired, if they're in a previous contract, then you're able to use that contact information and reach out. If the individual has moved on, their, if their phone number is listed, it's probably been reassigned to another member who's taken over their position. So JEDS, as well as our procurement office in Newfoundland, are able to assist you identify local suppliers. So if you're having difficulty finding people in your region, then that's where our office is able to, to help and help you navigate and find those regional contacts. So one of the things, um, and one of the reasons why we're doing the presentation today is uh, we are moving to what we're calling the EPS, the Electronic Procurement System. Um, even though we've been using buy and sell for quite a while, um, buy and sell is actually migrating. Um, and we will be moving over to a more procured, uh, we'll be moving over to a different system. So currently, the federal government is using buyandsell.gc.ca and we encourage people to be on both platforms until you're told that you're no longer needed to be on the old platform. So we do encourage businesses to be on both. Um, it does seem a little bit redundant, but um, as I go through some of the examples, you'll see why you need to be on both platforms. So within the current system, you're wanting to be registered under the supplier registration information system. So if you're currently a supplier of product or service in Newfoundland and not registered with the supplier registration information, it means that you're probably not selling to government because within that process, you're also registering to receive what we call your procurement business number. Similar to your business number with Revenue Canada, it is 
a, a similar number. It's, it's actually the same number, except that we're actually activating your account within our, within our department. So when you're looking at the supplier registration information, it will actually ask you to ensure that you have all of your registration information um, uh, available when you register because you're wanting to ensure that you register with the same information that you registered with the registry of joint stocks in, in Newfoundland, but also with Revenue Canada. So if you're currently operating as Paul's Consulting, but you're registered with Revenue Canada as 123 Nova Scotia Inc., then that's the information that you're wanting to ensure that you identify in the supplier registration database. So there you're putting in your company name, your capabilities, and there you'll be able to then obtain your procurement business number, which will then also be used in other databases. So there, the select database, pro services, as well as the translation, translation bureau, use that same business number to navigate the system. And that business number going into the new platform will be the same. So on all of our sites through uh, buyandsell.gc.ca, um, you'll see a request for people to look at Canada Buys. So Canada Buys is a new site that the federal government is launching, which will replace eventually, uh, while we do, um, as we transition over, will replace buyandsell.gc.ca. So currently you're almost having, unfortunately having to follow both, you're wanting to be identified under the supplier registration through buy and sell.gc.ca and maintaining those notifications within the current system. I do apologize there. Working from home and I do apologize there. <laughs> I never get called on the landline. <laughs> you guarantee um, the call always comes in when you're on a session, yeah. right? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So during the transition, um, and we're looking at at least for the year 2022, that businesses maintain their information on buy and sell, but they also then go over to the new system. So the new system is called Canada Buys, and there we will also be having access to what we call the SAP Ariba or Ariba Discovery. So um, I've heard that a few of you have already registered, which is great, but you weren't able to find information. So we would call you an early adapter. Um, so we're currently not 100% there on SAP Ariba, but taking that step and starting on the site does put you ahead of businesses that haven't registered yet, there yet. So we invite you to go over to SAP Ariba and we'll talk a little bit more about SAP Ariba and the Canada Buys site here. So Canada Buys is the new platform for all of our documents and our historical information on procurement. SAP Ariba will be the database for procurement. So currently within the buy and sell website, they were kind of one in the same. You would go to the tenders page and then you would then navigate the procurement there. Here, it'll actually be two separate platforms. So here we are encouraging people to go to canadabuys.canada.ca and then to follow the information in terms of registering. There, there are resources as well as online support. Um, and you're wanting to ensure that you're able to follow both notifications under both platforms. Why are we moving over to Canada Buys? The Canadian government over the last few years through some of its international uh, trade agreements, actually as a requirement of some of those trade agreements was to actually ensure that we actually had our procurement online and a lot better for both federal as well as provincial and municipal. So the Canada Buys platform will be a platform that will be used by the federal government as well as provincial governments, as well as municipal governments. Um, and for most municipal governments, because they fall under provincial uh, procurement, uh, depending on their thresholds, will be there as well. So 
Um, be, again, it's, be, it's not because the government wanted to. We probably could have done some updating on, on our website, but it is because of the Canadian-European trade agreement that we did have an obligation to bring our uh, procurement across Canada under a single platform. So Canada Buys will be the, the host website, but then SAP Ariba will be the tool that we use within that platform. So we are currently seeing tenders under both, but as we go forward, we'll see where the discrepancy is in terms of some of the data. So within the SAP Ariba, you'll, uh, or within the Canada Buys, you will see information on how to register both under the old and new, how to create an account under SAP Ariba if you haven't, um, and then also just some of the general information that's also on the old website in terms of learning the basics of procurement, how to promote your business, um, as we mentioned, to the government agencies. Um, if the business is Indigenous, um, to join and identify and register under the Indigenous business directory. And also it'll identify how to pre-qualify when we're selling through standing offers or supply arrangements. So a lot of that information is there as well. So SAP Ariba or Ariba Discovery is the new web-based tool um, that the government of Canada will be using, but other departments and other governments are already using it in Canada. So here we encourage you to register and completely identify your business profile. And this is where um, some of the supporting documents, both within um, the Canada Buys website will help you navigate as well as some of the other resources that I'll identify here as well. So SAP Ariba is a multi uh, or international tool used by over 250 uh, international governments as well as international companies. So it's not just a platform to buy and sell to the government or to sell to the government of Canada, uh, but eventually it will be for the government of Newfoundland. Um, as well as the province of Nova Scotia and other regions. So during the transition, you'll be able to bid on both a platform. So currently, if you are going into SAP Ariba and looking for opportunities, the documents may be hosted under SAP Ariba or it'll redirect you back to canadabuys.gc.ca and the reverse. If you're on buyandsell.gc.ca and looking at an active tender, that tender may redirect you back over to SAP Ariba. So it's better to be registered now. That way, if a document does redirect you to the, the new platform, that you're not then looking to register at that point. So it's better to be proactive and to register under SAP Ariba because eventually all of our documents will redirect you to SAP Ariba. And they're thinking by the end of 2022 that 90%, if not more, of all of the contracts will be initiated and hosted only on SAP Ariba with some supporting documents going back to buy and sell depending on the database. So during the transition, um, there are some key uh, URLs that you're wanting to look for. And uh, Deborah and Enlo have received a copy of the presentation. So you're not having to worry about trying to navigate all of the hyperlinks. So you'll be able to get a copy of the deck and the, the hyperlinks that are, that are shared. So one of the things that Canada buys, and I reached out to Canada buys because they, even though they're part of our office, their support system is separate than, than our support. So I reached out to Canada Buys directly to, to ask what are some of the issues that some suppliers are coming back to them. And it is really currently that confusion that it is two separate websites, even though they're offering procurement tools. Um, so it is that ensuring that suppliers realize that they should be looking at both. Um, it, it may be a little bit complex just at the very beginning, but once you're set up with your notifications on either SAP Ariba as well as on buy and sell, then hopefully that transition as we migrate over to SAP Ariba, then eventually you'll just disregard the things that are coming through um, the buy and sell because you should be receiving the notifications from SAP Ariba. 
So there it'll host tenders again, not just from the federal government, um, but provincial government, as well as multinational companies that you may decide you want to sell your product or service to. Um, their support system allows you to navigate very quickly, both by email or by chat, um, for support as, as you register your, uh, your needs on SAP Ariba. If it's a question relating to an actual procurement uh, process or, or a request for proposals, then at that point, you're then able to reach out to either our office or to the procurement officer that's listed in the document for that support and guidance. So the, the, the support really for buy and sell at this point is really for uh, suppliers to get registered and to navigate both the old site as well as the new site. They do actually also have a guide on how to register for SAP Ariba. And then once you're within SAP Ariba, there's just a few questions uh, when you identify the government of Canada that then gets sent to the government of Canada's support team for, then, for them to then acknowledge that you're a Canadian business and you're then approved to follow government tenders. You can still go on as a non supplier and register with SAP Ariba and follow the government of Canada without actually uh, putting in requests for tenders. So there is that two step process. You can just follow the government of Canada, but if you want to actually submit bids, then you do need to just get that completed registration process. So companies do need to complete what they call the supplier profile questionnaire to become registered. And then you do receive a notification back indicating that your process is complete. And within SAP Ariba, you then actually see Government of Canada procurement. Paul, well, while we're talking about that part, are there any tools or templates to write a bid? So, you know, you're given some guidance so you're not making too many errors along the way or going off in the wrong Correct. direction? Yep. What we usually recommend is on the buy and sell, there's information on how to prepare the bid, but it's usually based on the document. So the document itself will actually ask you to answer very specific questions. So we could have a template, but we would have to have multiple templates for the variety of departments and agencies, but it is that document that they send out and they usually tell you what they're looking for in terms of an answer. So they're asking for your capacity. They may be asking you for proof of certification. Um, if they're looking to identify very specifically for um, your security clearance. So very specific items will be requested within the documents. And those are things that you're wanting to ensure that you submit that way it doesn't uh, impede your ability to be um, to be marked really. So it's almost like uh, going through a, an, an assignment and you're ensuring that everything that's being asked for in the, the supply document is actually what's being answered. Because if you miss something within that document then they'll actually exclude you from the overall process because none of the information is there. And they do usually provide a fairly lengthy time. Uh, there are sometimes contracts that are very quick, but they usually allow for at least a few weeks, if not a few, a few months for people to actually get their documentation in order to submit. Okay. And with the SAP Ariba, because it is an online tool, one of the things that the, the tool itself will allow eventually is for people to have a lot of that information preloaded that they're able then to cut and paste as they're able to provide. Because one of the things that the SAP Ariba platform allows you to do is actually do it off of your phone, where nine times out of 10 people are using a, a tablet or their computer or their desktop or printing out the documents. This is really uh, an online platform where they're making it easier for, uh, for the, the suppliers. And government realizes that as well, that we do need to have that unified uh, process. That way we're not asking 20 different questions, 20 different ways. That if it's the same question, that we should all be asking it the same way. And then once it's answered, that it be a supporting document that's already included in your client profile. Excellent, thank you. And there's another question related to uh, post attenders as well. And it's, it's a question that what if there is no information associated with the post attender? Which would be odd that there's no information because yeah. there, it, there should be a PDF or a document that identifies. And most of the documents are usually 
at least 35 pages in length and some are even longer. So if there's no documents, you're just wanting to ensure the status of that tender to see if it's actually open because there should be a document attached to it. Right, and sometimes you know if it's open or not um, uh, according to the dates. Anyway, there's another the response to that is yes, nothing with the tender, it is open. Okay, hmm. um, Maybe if they, they, if they want ahead. to share uh, in the chat um, or at the end of the presentation is my email. Um, if they want to send me the, the, uh, the tender number, then we can look into it to see why there wouldn't be any documents attached to it. Right, okay. Yeah. And if you can take another question there in sure. relation to the, um, the tendering and that, can you filter according to multinational? Yes. So when you're in SAP Ariba, you can look for companies geographically. So you can look for North America. Okay. And there you would identify companies that are uh, just in North America, or you're able to do it based on governments. So if you're looking to sell to the US government, then depending on their process, you're able then to see uh, their supply request documents in SAP okay. Ariba. You won't see them on buy and sell. So buy and sell.gc.ca is only the federal government. SAP Ariba because it's a multinational tool, you'll be able to see both Government of Canada, Government of Nova Scotia, the City of Ottawa, City of Toronto, uh, Canada Revenue Agency. So we, there, there's a lot of other organizations there that allow you that opportunity to sell internationally very quickly based on your product or service. Okay, so it's really a, a real advantage if you're looking at uh, business growth outside Correct. the country, you know, so it, it opens up a lot of other avenues. No, that's great. Correct. I know we got a little sidetracked on the uh, <laughs> procurement oh. part, very specifics, but they all sort of came in at the one time. <laughs> nope, not Thank a problem. All. So probably the biggest thing is remembering if you're in SAP Ariba, um, if you're currently already there and you haven't filled in a supplier profile questionnaire, then you're wanting to send an email to the support email uh, to ask them to send you that questionnaire. That way you're then able to ensure that your registration with SAP Ariba allows you to see the Government of Canada procurement. Okay. There is again, the, the transitioning, transitioning. So it, we do have a document in terms of how to respond within SAP Ariba. Um, and the, the documents themselves will actually say whether or not you're submitting it directly through the platform or if you're emailing it to an actual common email or you're, uh, we're getting away from sending it in by fax and by mail. Um, so it will be that electronic procurement uh, su submission. They're still completing that functionality of e-signatures. Um, and as that evolves, then you, hopefully you're not having to print the last page of a document to then scan it to then resubmit. So they are working on that as well. So we do have a checklist uh, as you go through the SAP Ariba platform. And then there is the guide uh, in terms of just how to navigate. So I actually had to create my own account for SAP Ariba because my profile um, as a public service uh, employee was showing me the procurement side. So it was, it was showing me the same type of data that the procurement officers were seeing. I wanted to see what you as a supplier would see. So I'm selling. So when you're in your account within SAP Ariba and for the, once you're in SAP Ariba, it'll make a little bit more sense when you're, when you're in there, you actually identify right at the very top of the, the, the website that you're selling. And I wanted to look at all leads within SAP Ariba, and I wanted to identify the government of Canada. So I used that as one of my search pr pr parameters, and then I used Newfoundland. So as of yesterday, there were only nine showing in SAP Ariba. One of them was open, and it was a request for standing offers for supply paper. That was compared to 99 that were in buy and sell. So in buy and sell, there were 99 active uh, requests, where in SAP Ariba, because it was a retender for a standing offer, there was only the one document. 
So for those of you who may have had difficulty navigating and saying that you weren't sure whether or not the platform was working properly, it was probably working properly. It's just that as we go through that transitional, there's not a lot currently on the SAP Ariba. Going forward though, um, on a daily basis, you will see more being hosted on SAP Ariba, but its original document or its supporting document will be on buy and sell. So that's one of the things really to take, uh, to take note of is really to ensure that you set yourselves up within SAP Ariba, that way you're able to navigate it. And within your business, um, your business uh, description is really how you set yourself up for notification. So um, where some of our documents are lagging, I, I did look at some other supporting documents. So uh, the city of Toronto has a nice PDF and I'll, and I'll share with Deborah the link after. Um, and the, the, the province of Nova Scotia has some videos. So if you're more of a reader or a video, uh, or if you prefer video, then SAP Ariba as well does videos. But it's really in terms of setting up your notifications, it's really ensuring that your description of your products and services that you offer is in your profile. Um, so if you're a tradesperson or if you are supplying translation, you have to ensure that that is within your client profile because if you're wanting notification, it's that type of information that it's confirming that you're actually able to provide the service. So the more products or services you offer in your company, the, the, the more robust your client profile should be in SAP Ariba. If you're just doing uh, translation, translation services, then you, it'll only be the translation service. But if you offer multiple lines of product, multiple lines of services within your business, you're wanting to ensure that all of those are done. So if you're a videographer or a, a, an a advertising company, but you also do print, um, then those are things that you're wanting to ensure that all of those uh, categories are captured within your client profile. Paul, well, sometimes it can be a little bit of a challenge to, uh, you know, the type of work that you do. I have a question here. Um, in SAP Ariba, when it asks for product and service categories, what category would you suggest Indigenous awareness training fall under? You're probably wanting to look at, at consulting. Um, okay. You're probably wanting to, to reach out as well to the Indigenous services uh, procurement office uh, that the federal government does have, because they would also be able to identify anything specific. Um, you're also wanting to ensure as an Indigenous business that you're actually in the Indigenous procurement database mm -hmm. um, as well, because when we're looking for uh, very specific organizations uh, that provide that service, um, if they're not within a database and we're then just relying on Google to find your company, then it doesn't help us. So where it's very specific to Indigenous, um, there may be that ability to add within comments who you're targeting to, but you're probably looking under that consulting uh, advisory. I'd have to go into the SAP directory to see if it goes a little bit more in depth in terms of being able to select uh, something that specific, um, but that's something that we can look at uh, uh, after uh, if the, the person wishes to email me directly. Sure, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah. So there are two help desks. So our office will help you with the buy and sell and navigating the tender website. And then for very specific questions relating to Canada buys or SAP Ariba, then we do ask you to reach out to the Canada buy service desk. So they're very quick. Um, when you're in the, the chat window, um, there, it takes, about, takes somebody about a minute to log in to the chat box. Um, there they do track it. So I do have one or two inquiries that are uh, that they're following up and they'll send you an, an email notification on where the status of your inquiry is. So um, it does allow you that ability to know that it's not just an email, you receive an email notification that you're what we would call really a ticket or your inquiry is open. And then as it moves on to either another department or to, that it's been completed, you then receive that follow-up email uh, from the, the Canada Buys group in terms of yes, 
or no in terms of uh, that uh, inquiry being completed, as well as by email, as well as by phoning. So they're, they're, they are available from eight until eight uh, Atlantic Standard Time. So in terms of next steps, it, it, even though it's a very short presentation today, we are wanting you to look at selling to the government if the government of Canada has never been a, a, a client. Um, if you're selling to the province um, or if you're selling internationally outside of Newfoundland, then you probably have some capacity to sell to the government of Canada depending on the product or service. You want to register with the supplier registration information system. So one of my inquiries to buy and sell was what is happening to that registry database. So we're not sure if it's going to be rebranded or if it's just going to be moved over and dropped into the Canada buys because that supplier registration information is being used by both uh, the government as well as by, uh, by clients. So we're not sure if it'll stay within the buy and sell website or if it'll be moved over to the Canada buys website. That way you're then just registering your supplier registration information there. So that was one of my questions. So they haven't gotten back to me yet. That's one of my tickets that's open. Um, you're wanting to ensure that you create your SAP Ariba. Um, you want to see whether or not there are other resources available. So remember to, to, to network with those departments or agencies in your community that you could sell your product or service to especially if it's low dollar value. And when we think of low dollar value, it's anything under $25,000 for goods and 40,000 for services. And 95% of what the government buys is low dollar value. We, we, we forget to say that we buy a lot, but we don't buy a warship or a building every day. Um, a lot of times we're renting buildings now. So if you're a, a landlord of commercial property, then there's opportunities there for uh, to be a landlord for the government of Canada when they put out requests. Um, and they will do that. They will put out a request within uh, various publications, organizations, uh, the realtors, if they're looking for space to rent, um, or if they're looking for product or service that they're not getting a lot of uptake on the, the request for tenders. Um, as an example, in the community of Port Hawkesbury here in, in, uh, in Nova Scotia, there's a, a, an expression of interest uh, for landlords to let them know what type of building they have, the square footage they have, uh, because the government is looking for an office space within the, the town of Port Hawkesbury. Um, so that happens throughout the, the year uh, by various government departments and agencies, just based on their needs or the need of another department. So it could be that the, uh, it could be the fisheries and oceans that's looking for an office in Port Hawkesbury. Fisheries and oceans is the end client, but it's our office that's actually looking for and managing that property on their behalf. So a lot of those are great opportunities for smaller businesses, opportunities for growth. Yes, yeah. they are. Considering yeah. the percentage of small cost items or lower cost items that the government of Canada purchases. Correct. Yeah. Um, one of the th things that came up in a presentation earlier this morning uh, was, well, how do we showcase our product to potential government clients. So unfortunately, we don't have a, a platform where you're able to show your product or service. That's where really where the supplier registry information comes into play. It identifies your product or service, um, but it's attending conferences or going to networking opportunities because government buyers or procurement officers or government uh, staff are at conferences um, that are happening within various sectors. So transportation, uh, boat building, uh, farming, like I've, my colleague in New Brunswick is getting ready for a, a farming conference in PEI later this summer, as well as the, the large uh, construction uh, that's happening in New Brunswick. So if you sell your product or service and you're at those events, a lot of times government is there looking to see who is supplying what products because 
if it is a low dollar value, so under 25,000 or 40,000, then it's good to see who's uh, providing that. But it really is that networking and, and talking to your local uh, organizations. And unfortunately, it may not be that individual directly who does the purchasing, but they're able to find out who in their office does it either regionally or within a, a, a regional office. So if it's um, say your local post office box, they may not purchase it directly. It may be somebody uh, out of either Atlantic or out of Quebec or out of Ontario that buys it on their behalf. So we provide seminars uh, uh, on a weekly basis. So our office along with our counterparts across Canada uh, provide weekly seminars on various topics open to the public. And the, 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 you're able to find those right off of our event calendar uh, within the, the buy and sell website. Um, we're currently not on the Canada buy site, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it redirects you back to the Canada buy. So they, they haven't migrated our event calendar yet. Um, and we're able then to then do one-to-one -one sessions uh, indirectly. Um, so you're able to email me directly, but we also have a national procurement. So my contact information is at the bottom um, because depending on your, the level of your inquiry, it could be that it's something very quick that you're looking for that our procurement assistance national office is able to assist. Um, if it's something more regional, then we do have a regional office here where there's a field, uh, a group of us here uh, able to uh, answer your inquiry. And um, I'm not sure if Chris, if you're as part of the attendees, um, Chris is my new team leader uh, in Newfoundland, and he will eventually be joined by an outreach officer in Newfoundland uh, in the next few weeks. So we are looking to staff somebody physically in Newfoundland uh, for outreach for community events, meetings with clients uh, in terms of one-to-ones or by Zoom. Uh, I'm in Nova Scotia, so unfortunately I, I can't come and visit. But uh, I, Deborah said it was a little bit windy there today. So today it's nice. I've got green grass. Well, I don't have green grass, but I, I can see my grass today. Uh, tomorrow I might not be able to. Uh, but uh, it is that local service here in Atlantic. And then with uh, Chris is uh, our, our team leader and he's able to answer inquiries. He does come from uh, our department. And then over the next week or so, we'll have uh, another staff member in Newfoundland to provide support to clients, both in Newfoundland as well as Atlantic because it is a regional team. So we're able to help uh, across, across the country or interprovincially at least. And it's really that uh, in terms of any any questions? And, and, I, and I know some people had some very specific questions as to tenders. Uh, feel free to email me directly and I can look at look at that as well. And if it's a, a video conference or a call that you wish, then we're able to connect. And I do see a hand up. So I'm not sure if that's Chris or a question. Uh, there, there is a question here actually, um, Paul. But First, before I get into the question, it's it's uh, it's great to know that uh, these kinds of resources are being put into uh, the Procurement Assistance Canada because it's all kinds of services to assist businesses in doing business with the government. This Correct. is uh, this is very very good to hear. Much yeah. better than hearing it go the other way. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 people um, people don't realize the opportunities that government buys. And it could be that you feel that your product or service may not be a direct sell to the government. It's getting into that supply chain. So the other day I was actually speaking with a company that provides cleaning solution uh, and their key target is janitorial companies. And we, every building that the government of Canada operates under either has a direct contract with a cleaning company or the landlord has a cleaning company that's in their building and it's part of the service that they offer as part of the lease. So we, I, I worked with that client in terms of their product and who some of the national contracts for cleaning supplies were being done in the region because his product would be something that he would sell to them versus the government directly. Um, uh, for some aspects, it could be a product that we would buy directly, but um, he's looking to buy 
as part of our supply chain versus selling to the Canadian government directly. He's looking to find our suppliers uh, who provide cleaning services to sell his product to. And, and an equally important area when you start getting into the tiers Correct. of business, right? Find the, the right people who have the connections and then what they're buying and then what their buyers are buying and so forth. Yeah. And uh, that's a really um, opportunistic way to enter the supply chain. And uh, just, as well, I'm just going to um, go back because I'm not sure if it's on my screen capture. Oh, yeah. So right within the government of Canada. So it, it, I don't have it down as a drop down menu. But when we look at the buy and sell website, there's the tab for business, but then there's the tab for government. So when we think of the supplier registration information, I, as a government employee, if when I'm looking for a supplier, um, so if I was looking for a company doing cleaning, I don't have a secret database um, that I have access to. I'm going to the public database that that client has put their information in. And then rather than going under the business side, I'm going under the government side and I'm looking for that supplier based on either location, company name, or by product. Um, so at that point, I'm putting in cleaning supplies or I'm putting in janitorial uh, to find that list of companies. And that's where I showed the client is this is how we can find some of those companies or we can see whether or not within any standing offers or uh, companies that have listed themselves as being available for a specific contract that they're then able to see that client information right online as well. So everything that the government does historically for the last 10 years is available on the, the buy and sell website on the various products and services that they've bought. So it's all public disclosure. It's the low dollar value that doesn't unfortunately get disclosed here uh, because they're buying it often. So if it's um, a one-time requirement for a department, then they may only be buying it once in a while, but it could be something under 25,000 or under 40,000. And for, uh, for some businesses, that is uh, a good two or three uh, weeks or months of work that they're able to get under a government contract. Well, that, that sounds fabulous. Um, I have another question here too from uh, a participant. Just going, yeah. Um, are we able to access data on markets for consulting from different government clients? Uh, she's a one person in business. And um, so, you know, like all small businesses, we're trying to be very efficient in, uh, in finding clients. And, uh, or is it just trial and error? How? It is and it isn't. So by using the, the, the either the actual term, so that depending on the nature of the type of uh, customer, we can look to see whether or not that consulting term is used in any of the requests for tenders, or we can look to see if what specific code is appropriate for that service. And from there, we're then able to use that code to see historically what contracts have been purchased. And there it gives us an idea of who offers the translation or the, the service. So a good example is uh, bankruptcy. So all the companies out in Canada that offer bankruptcy support to people, uh, the general public, um, it's federally regulated, but the Office of Bankruptcy in Ottawa uh, last year did put out a request to actually have a short list of suppliers across Canada um, identified that way if somebody was looking for someone through their office, they had a very short list, even though their list of who's available to provide bankruptcy services is available. So there we use the term bankruptcy or and trustee to find the office of bankruptcy and the contact for uh, that, uh, that, uh, that supplier. Because they were wondering, um, they didn't think that uh, bankruptcy for, from government would be a, a product or a service that we would sell. Um, it's because they were looking for that list of suppliers for their clients uh, when they're dealing with either federal bankruptcy issues or people that are reaching out to the bankruptcy office to actually have that list, short list of organizations that they can refer people to directly or to they're able to go to the website to see um, who offers the service in their community. So they're able to, people are able to find bankruptcy 
through both a list that the office holds, but the office also has a public site with a searchable directory. So they did it twofold. Wow, wow, that's, uh, that's really uh, valuable information when you're looking for uh, clients or uh, uh, yeah. you know, some business opportunities. Yeah. And, and it's easier to do the research to find those potential opportunities than to disregard the opportunities and say that the government doesn't buy. Um, it's really that, like we buy falconry services to ensure that our regional uh, airports um, don't have uh, evasive birds in, in the area uh, in Cape Breton. And actually, I think it's a contract that's open through Veterans Affairs for Atlantic. Um, they're looking for people to clean very specific graveyards that are managed by Veterans Affairs. Um, so we buy a variety of product and services. Like it's, you, you really don't have to think too far outside the box as to whether or not the government buys it. It's a matter of not asking. If you don't ask, then we, we, we might not be able to say whether or not we buy it or not. No, that's true. Well, I have a favorite saying that uh, when it comes to any aspect of, uh, you know, supply chains and getting diverse suppliers into the supply chain, like women-owned business or minority-owned businesses, you know, I say businesses buy, and especially corporations buy everything. Correct. Like it, they really do. If, if you can think it, they're probably going to buy it, or there's some arm of their operation that's going to buy it, or if they're not buying it, one of their suppliers is buying it. Right. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really good emphasis there on that part that, um, you know, a, a lot of what you were talking about today is, you know, they, they really do buy everything from paper clips to warships. Right. And and remembering that there's a lot more on the paper clip in and that they're buying, really. Correct. Like it, we don't buy ships or large buildings that often. It's it's the, the support after that we're buying. Yeah. So if we're buying a building, then it's all of the infrastructure and the work interior to that that needs either a, a monthly service or a product or uh, a resource. So um, for the last year, we haven't done a lot with purchasing paper. Um, that's probably why they're now putting out the request again to buy paper because we didn't use a lot last year. Um, but at the same time, we've got organizations like Parks Canada that will start to emphasize the, their products and services, both by electronic and probably by print. So they'll probably start doing more by print in terms of advertising, brochures, uh, commercials uh, in terms of selling locally. So we can say Parks Canada is a national brand, but Gross Morn or very specific areas within a, in a community, sometimes the overall request is made by an office, say in Ottawa, but the product is delivered maybe directly in the community or used by the community locally. Uh, Paul, there's another question here as well. Um, is the procurement business number required to submit a response to a tender? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because if you are the if you are the recipient of the contract, be, where your information is already registered and your uh, your profile is created, it's also the way that you get paid. So your payment information in terms of how we pay you also gets captured roughly at the same time within the supplier registration on the backside to ensure that if you do get the contract that we're not then looking for the information to pay you. And that's a very important part on the other end of things. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking again to see if there are any other questions. And I'm not sure if it's Chris is still there, if you wanted to I'm not sure if he's able to share his camera or if he's uh, just so people are able to put a, a, a name to a face. Okay, he is, but oh. he can't. But he can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just checking here. Are there any other questions from uh, the 
the participants. I know it's a fair amount to uh, absorb, which is great that you're able to uh, provide the slides and all the links and that so that uh, we can send it along to the uh, participants. And of course, if anyone has any questions, there are all kinds of support there, depending on the type of questions that you have. Right. And um, I know that some of our business advisors have also participated in uh, this event. So if you're looking for uh, a further discussion around uh, doing business with uh, the government of Canada and where you may fit and those kinds of things, I'm sure the business advisors, um, and I'm available as well, uh, can help you uh, navigate some of that and uh, come up with, I mean, the easiest thing of all is when you're looking to uh, gain further information is that if you can have some very specific questions, because then uh, people like Paul can, you know, really, you know, answer things for you or find out specifically what you're looking for. So uh, having those kind, having sort of thought about it and, um, you know, try to identify where you may fit or exactly what your offering is, knowing being very strong on your value proposition. Those kinds of things really help a lot in um, identifying, you know, your business, but also identifying, you know, who your client target, who your target client may be as well. Yeah. And if if people don't wish to put anything in the chat and they are looking for that one to one, just send me an email and uh, we, we can arrange based on both of our schedules, uh, either a telephone call. Or, or an MS Teams or a Zoom call uh, to actually have either a half hour or 15 minute conversation, depending on uh, what, your, what your request is. Oh, that's wonderful, Paul, thanks. And there's one other question just came in here. Is there a resource person to contact to cross check initial setup is done correctly? For SAP Ariba or for uh, supplier registration information? Uh, it doesn't identify either but if it's under the supplier registration information it's something that we can both log in together and we can do like a virtual walkthrough to to ensure that your commodities or your service are identified within the, the supplier registration um, if it's <clears throat> if it's um, something under SAP Ariba then utilizing the tools that SAP Ariba as well as our buy and sell staff are then able to say, they're then able to say, yes, your information. With, with SAP Ariba, when you, think of a, a, when you think of filling out an application, the only time you're really leaving it blank if it's not applicable. Um, so if you're going through your application and your profile for SAP Ariba, the only time that a, a box should be blank is really if it's not applicable for you. So if they're asking you for a fax number and you don't have a fax number, then you don't have to worry about it. But if they're asking you for very specific things about your business or your commodity or your service, those are things that you're wanting to. Um, the same would hold true if you're identifying like for notifications, it'll say, do you want Canada? And then from Canada, it'll then identify provinces if for provinces, it'll then identify municipalities. Um, so at that point, it then allows you to uh, navigate a little bit further. Um, and then through that um, notification system, you're then able then to specifically identify whether or not you're looking for just Newfoundland as a whole. Um, when I was trying to find it on the public site for procurement, for Nova Scotia, because I was doing a presentation this morning with Nova Scotia, um, it wouldn't really allow me to do a separation of the two. So when I was looking for the government of Canada and also within Nova Scotia, I was bringing up all of the province's procurement as well. So at that point, I just had to limit myself to, to the government of Canada. And then I had to use a secondary uh, request or uh, uh, filter to just have the, the federal government procurements. But I was also able to go back to the buy and sell website to see if I was getting the proper uh, number of uh, requests uh, in terms of the, the tenders that were out. Excellent. Well, yeah. Paul, that, those are great, excellent answers. And thank you very much because as I scroll down, she was looking for information on both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, both uh, and I see, 
Yeah, and I see that we've invited my the email that I sent Chris uh, if he wanted to log back in. Um, so I'm not sure if he's logging back in or. Uh, okay, I think he's having a technical issue with his uh, with his computer as well. Okay. So right. Chris is going to come on in a in a second here here just to. Oh, to wonderful! Talk. Yeah. Okay, that's that's great. Yeah. This is bonus. We get to meet the uh, the new people with uh, Procurement Assistance Canada who will uh, because I think when I spoke with you last time they were in the process of uh, looking Correct. at someone for Newfoundland as well. Newfoundland yeah. Labrador. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris is joined uh, or will be joining, but he's still within our office over in Newfoundland, uh, just up the just up the road, if I remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> Here I can say Bedford, Sackville. I forget the, some of the names of the small communities just outside of uh, St. John's. <laughs> and there are quite a few of them. Yeah. Can give... Okay. In the meantime, are there any other questions out there that uh, anyone would like to pose while we have this opportunity? to get all the details on doing business with the government of Canada. And incredible updates too, since uh, you know the last time we looked at any of this, because when you're, whenever you're switching systems, there's you know, a bit of a process there and a bit of a learning curve. And um, you know, it, it's nice to know where there are some other resources in that that uh, you can go to for further yeah. information. Yeah. And probably the biggest thing right now is if you're not seeing a lot under SAP Ariba, then quickly go over to the buy and sell website to, to see whether or not the buy and sell website is showing anything for Newfoundland or for something very specific. Because if it is showing something and SAP Ariba isn't, then there may be a disconnect uh, either on our side or in terms of some of the, the search parameters that you're looking for. But I, I know for like today, um, there is not a lot. Uh, that's why uh, we, why people, if they've been seeing the, the notification and wondering why they weren't able to see anything, it's because it, it is a slow transition. We're looking to see a lot more um, over the next few weeks. Uh, they're saying by at least the end of June, uh, we should see a, a very large, shuffle of documents from one side to the other uh, in terms of uh, people's ability to see under SAP Ariba as well as buy and sell, but you'll see more under SAP Ariba as more of the procurement staff finish posting and completing uh, not just through their office, but through the other departments and agencies. So we're doing the onboarding of not just PSPC, but of all of the departments and agencies to ensure that their profiles are in place as well. It's a massive undertaking. Yeah. It doesn't turn on a dime. No. <laughs> well, even with government, at one point, all of the independent websites were going over to Canada.ca, and some departments have, and some departments have gone back to just being their uh, their original website. Oh, interesting. Oh, Chris is having tech issues, so. <laughs> but if, if somebody needs Chris's uh, assistance in Newfoundland uh, over the next few weeks, then I can always connect them to Chris directly or to our new uh, outreach officer once they're, once they're settled in as well. If not, uh, I'm more than happy to, to help uh, any clients uh, navigate both platforms uh, as they go forward. Well, that's wonderful, Paul. So I don't see any more questions there. And uh, I guess I'll do the last call <laughs> if there's any others. In the meantime, um, if there are no other questions, uh, you do have lots of uh, really good links for resources and, um, and contacts in the, the presentation. And we will be forwarding the presentation along with an evaluation form uh, in the next little while. So please, uh, Complete the evaluation form and we always, we always like your feedback and if there's any other suggestions for events or anything that you would like, by all means uh, provide that as well. And, um, and then you will have the presentation then to, uh, to work closely with and uh, possibly find uh, a market in the uh, Government of Canada. 
and uh, to as an opportunity to grow your business there. And it's also nice to know that there are international opportunities too, because it it really does. It's a great resource for you know really looking at what your business is and where your clients may be or how you can develop your client base. Yeah. So Paul, I'd like to say thank you very, very much for joining us today. This has been a a wealth of information. And, uh, you know, as I just mentioned, an opportunity for us to uh, review again and uh, again. So I think the the slides will be put to uh, great use. There were lots of requests about whether or not they'd be provided uh, later. So thank you once again. And just before everybody leaves, if they go into the chat, Christopher has put in his emails, uh, so they're able to uh, quickly take that if they uh, to copy his email address there before they, we leave as well. Okay, yes, that's a great idea. Yes, because he's, he's another contact. See, you get two in one today. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> two in one presentation. Um, so, and I'd also like to say thank you all very, very much for participating today in uh, the Passport for Growth. The next one that we'll be doing will be on March the 31st. And uh, we'll be looking at um, some tax questions regarding uh, doing business internationally as well. So, okay. Um, some people are having problems with seeing Chris's information, but that's okay. I'll um, it's I'll copy it and we'll put it. I'll make sure that everyone gets a copy of his email as well. Okay, I'll I'll look after that. It's uh, yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay, well, once again, thank you, Paul, and thank, thank you, you everyone for participating, and uh, look forward to uh, another passport for growth. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thanks again, Paul. There was a lot of information to cover there. It was great. You have a good afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.